roles and responsibilities are. Um, again, if Carla's not there, we can we can hold this off um, until we discuss this. Go through how to build a, and update a sim form. Uh, custom fields essentially talks about the different types of fields that can be used when building out a form. Uh, how are approvals configured within Coupa? How are those forms mapped together? And then how can we drive reports out of it? Any question on the agenda before we start? Uh, uh, Krista, nope. could you start recording, please? It's reflecting recording on my end. OK. That works. So let's go ahead and get started. First part we wanted to talk through is the same overview. So supplier information management, as most of you might be aware, is Coupa's um, supplier onboarding tool. Uh, it is essentially how I like to think about it is in a, in a regular process, you have a form that uh, you send a physical form or email a form to a supplier. The supplier, he or she will populate it, send it back to you, and you would have all of the information in Coupa. In this scenario, Coupa kind of digitizes that, so you're using Coupa mechanism to build out the form. You're using Coupa to uh, get the form approved, as well as the supplier uses Coupa to make all of the required updates so it can quickly populate into uh, what we need the supplier record to reflect. Uh, and again, we'll share this deck right after this call so that you guys can have access to it as well. What, what SIM does and what SIM does not do. So starting with the does first, it streamlines the supplier onboarding process and supplier change process. So it ensures like you're using Coupa's mechanisms and there is a consistent method on how this would be done going forward. The second, similar to a questionnaire, as I just mentioned, or a web form, uh, SIM allows you to customize the forms exactly like how you would need it so that you can collect all of the information that you need. Uh, SIM allows submissions to go through the right approval workflow. Uh, this might differ based on type of supplier, type of commodity, uh, region, uh, how, how we've seen it in the past. So it can go a few different ways. And then finally, a SIM record or when this information is collected from the supplier, uh, it can interface with the ERP and make sure that the data is current. We'll, get, we'll dive a little deeper into that on how the ERP comes into play. Any questions on what SIM can do? Okay, what SIM does not do? The first one is it is not a system of record. Yes, we can report on forms that are collected, but the system of record in every case will always be Oracle. And then the supplier will be integrated over from Oracle into Coupa. So in any scenario, the first creation is an Oracle. Uh, Oracle continues to be the system of record for PNG. And then both the systems would be in sync based on the integrations that are built into it. The Second thing SIM is not is it's not true supplier relationship management. It doesn't do supplier stratification. It does not do scorecarding. It does not do those kind of checks. Um, this is the plain vanilla SIM process that we have in Coupa today. Uh, Coupa, as a part of multiple other releases, uh, brought in our repackaged it as RPMA or risk and performance management uh, and assessment, uh, which does broader risk awareness, uh, risk checks as well. But we're not going to talk about that piece. We're simply going to talk about the uh, supplier management process. It does not allow conditional forms to suppliers. So all of the suppliers will tend to see the exact same form. And then so if I have a form in Canada, if I have a form in the US, essentially it sends the same format to the suppliers. 
The last one is it does not allow you to deactivate the supplier. Um, so if that needs to be done, the supplier, if we're decommissioning the supplier, we go into Oracle, we de uh, deactivate it and allow the integration to do the same in Coupa as well, um, so that that supplier is no longer available for use. Any questions on this? No. Okay. So supplier onboarding process without SIM, I think we've talked through this a few different times, but just to recap it uh, for the purpose of this group is a, a new supplier needs to be identified. The paperwork is sent to the supplier. Supplier does all of their paperwork, sends it back to the client. We go ahead and create the supplier in an Oracle. Once it's approved, we uh, manually create the supplier in Oracle. This is going to be replaced by SIM or how we do things today at PNG. So the SIM process is a little more steps, but it's mostly using Coupa. So on the left, we have the list of activities that Coupa would do, uh, what a supplier is responsible for, and then finally what an ERP is required to do. So the first form is a new supplier request. This is essentially sent by someone like an end user. Uh, he or she is going to be make it, uh, requesting a new supplier for whatever purposes. It routes through approvals and the this would essentially be a vendor management team who would say, does this supplier make sense or do we have ex an existing supplier that can fulfill this requirement? And then uh, go back to the end user saying either, yes, we have a true need for this kind of a supplier or uh, we go back and say, no, uh, we already have a contract with a supplier for this given item, so we're not going to be approving this supplier request. Following that, a SIM record is created. Once it's approved, a SIM record starts to get created within Coupa. Uh, the request or the second form, I, I usually like to call it form number two, uh, gets sent to the supplier. This is essentially all the information that we're requesting from the supplier. So this could be banking information, remit two details, primary contact information. Uh, all of that good information is something that a form gets sent to the supplier. Supplier gets notified. He or she will fill out the required details and then submit it back. Once it gets submitted back from a process standpoint, it would route through the approvals once again. I know this team has been doing a lot of vendor management uh, work. So essentially you go through OFAC checks or you go ahead and make all of the required updates or approve the information based on what's being published by the supplier on the form. And then uh, the vendor management team does a swivel chair. This integration does not exist today, but they look at that information on, or on Kupasim create the supplier record in Oracle, and then Oracle integrates that back into Google. Any questions on this? No. OK. So we wanted to talk through responsibilities on how this is going to be maintained, but we can Circle back on what this team is expected to do versus what team uh, managing Coupa would need to do. So I'm going to come back to that particular section, uh, but want to go through the other pieces of this first. So Coupa forms, again, different forms require different pieces of information. You would have seen some of these. The first form is what we call the internal update form. Uh, wherein the end user provides information on why he or she needs the supplier. So they could put a justification, a reason for request, um, it, what commodity it belongs to, who's the primary contact of that supplier that they've spoken to, and then router for approvals. At this stage, Coupa does do 
some duplicate checks for that supplier uh, just to just to make sure like this supplier does not already exist in Koopa. And it does and it does so doing a few different things. So one of which is one of which is uh, the email ID of the primary contact, then a fuzzy match on the name, uh, on the TIN number or any of the tax ID numbers. So Koopa has three or four ways in which it can verify whether it's a duplicate. It'll always ask you, like, is this the supplier that you were trying to create? Uh, so I'm just going to quickly demo how that's how that takes place. So I have several suppliers in Koopa that pre-exist. So what I'm going to do is create a form, and this is essentially our form, our new vendor form. So a new vendor supplier request. So I can put PNG test supplier. Got to put a quick region to it. And then I'm going to say with Kristoff. Person that we are looking higher. And I'm going to put a number in here. Let me go ahead and review. You, I'll come back to this, but this is one of Kuba's smart functionality, wherein if a field is picked, which is a tax ID number, it can do a smart check saying this has to be nine digits or exactly so. Uh, exactly like how I populated this, it would error out in that scenario. So they do not see any information in here available right now, so they go ahead and do a uh, route for approvals. But if this was an existing supplier, this would have done a fuzzy match on. The second form here uh, has all of the information collected from a supplier, so what their payment terms are, what are their remit two addresses, the W8, W9 form attachments, depending on what our requirements are. Again, we've done a few different sessions with Coupa. I'm not going to dive too deep into this, but uh, this would essentially guide us on. We can update what this, inf what information we want to collect for US specific information or Canada specific information. The last form, this one does not exist for Koopa today. Uh, it is something that can be added, or we do see in some sample with some customers. It's essentially once the whole process is completed and once everything is approved, it's one last check piece before it goes into Oracle. And this would be our AP team if they want to add like this. These are the payment terms that we'd be paying them with. These are the shipping terms or any last piece of information that an, a supplier would not have on their end. So that's essentially the three pieces or three forms that we typically see with any same request. Any questions here? Okay. Can I ask one, and, and I apologize, I have to drop at 11 o'clock, but can I just, that's one sort of global question. I mean, it's great. We're going through, you know, the different forms. I think the team's familiar with the SIM process. What I'm what I'm trying to understand, and it may be more discussion with sourcing, is what are the current things that sourcing does in SIM that will down the road become the responsibility of accounts payable? You know, what are the specific tasks? How do you what do you, how do you manage SIM today? And you know, what are those tasks that are coming over to accounts payable? That's I think that's at some point we have to get out of these sessions so we understand we so we know what we're assuming responsibility for. And that may be after this original review of SIM, but I think we have to get to that. That was the section that I actually skipped over, which we were previously. Okay. Uh, Thank you. 
essentially what we have broken sim down into and again this training that covers in detail on how those updates can be made but we essentially break it down into four different clusters uh of config one is the forms uh how is the form created and maintained uh how do we determine what field type do we need to select for it uh how do we define conditionality between those fields? So that's essentially the kind of questions that come up specific to form updates. If we go talk about approvals, then we would need to determine requirements on what approvals are required, uh, make sure that the approvers are updated uh, periodically uh, in case someone leaves the organization or in case someone new gets added onto the team, how's that could be maintained? The third piece is Supplier onboarding checks similar to running the vendor tax ID, doing an OFAC check or any third party kind of check uh, that might be needed to be done as a part of the approvals. And then finally, since we do not have an integration today, how is the swivel chair going to take place between SIM and Coupa? And that is the part that I essentially skipped over when we spoke about this. So. Carla, uh, if you want to uh, jump in or guide, but I believe the forms, the supplier onboarding checks is something that we would be transitioning over to the AP team. And then approvals would still be managed by procurement and then supplier creation and Oracle would be something that would need to be continued by the vendor management team. Yeah, so Jerry, the only thing that we currently do with SIM is update the, the forms if there's any modifications. So okay. like right now, I think we're trying to modify the form. So Angelina has been working with Mary Lou on those specifics, and all we do on the back end is actually implement that into the into the system. So I think Imam is going to do a working session within Koopa, and that's literally, that's the only piece that we handle that, that we're going to, pass over to you guys. OK, perfect. So if we're not updating the forms, there's no other. I, I just wasn't sure, Carla, if you had, you know, daily things that you maintained in Coupa. Nope. Like Amon mentioned approvals, updating approvals. Is that is that a task? Or no, it's gonna, that that'll keep following the same the same approval path. So I believe like if a specific property It'll go to the procurement team and then the vendor registration team, then AP or um, so that's going to continue as is. You guys don't have to. None of that's going to be passed over. OK, it's strictly the building of the form, any modifications of the form. So, you know, uh, six months down the line, if you guys want to change the verbiage on a specific section, it's just as easy as going in, editing that sim and updating it. OK, great. Bye. So once we make this last change, let's not update the forms anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and honestly, like I, I don't that that I'm not saying that's the goal, but no, I was just joking. We don't have a ton of change. I mean, you don't want to change it every so often because it does create like a, a new link and all that. So I mean, I, I think Angeline has maybe made two revisions since going live. So it's trust me, it's not a lot. <laughs> no, no, I was just I was just kidding. We're going to be supporting on how well we are working on updating the form to incorporate Canada and any specific information that they may ask. Uh, of course, those changes are pretty minimal at this point uh, from all our discussions with the score team, but that's essentially what we would be transitioning over to you. Any other questions on this? Okay. So this is essentially a sample workflow. Coupa forms are of two kinds. And just a quick question to Carla before we continue on the second type. Um, Carla, are we doing supplier updates today through SIM or is that done directly into Oracle and then updated? Um, what kind of updates? Like, what do you mean? 
like do we have update forms configured in Koopa or whenever a supplier needs to be updated, for example, a primary contact of a supplier changed? How is that maintained today? Um, we so there's on the supplier record that's more for the procurement team that we update if needed. Um, but I believe everything else, like any type of updates that AP does, pushes from Oracle. Okay. We do not have the second piece of this. Uh, and thanks for confirming, Carla. And I'll come to in a minute on why this is essential when we start talking about these things. Uh, typical forms in SIM is, and it works very well in the first type. It has some limitations in the second type, but it's either for a net new vendor that is being onboarded into Coupa, or, and the second is when an update needs to be done. So essentially, there are several customers who use Coupa to update um, a SIM record, a supplier information record in Coupa. This may be updating a contact information or adding a new remit to address or in a deactivating an existing remit to address. So there are a few different things that might need to be changed eventually. Uh, so that's when essentially a supplier update form comes into play. I'll come into a minute on why this is critical when we start thinking about these things. The second is the form type. We've seen this done in a few different ways. We only really need to concern ourselves with form with number one at this point, which is a supplier populated onboarding request. The other types of forms are essentially used when a certain type of supplier, such as garments, utilities, taxes, the supplier doesn't necessarily, is never going to populate your form or create it through SIM. So sometimes what clients do is whenever they want to make sure like that form is populated uh, or there is a record within Coupa on how that supplier came to be, uh, they create this internal request forms. Why is that essential? And what I wanted to show you was, let's go to setup and then go to forms. So this is how we basically route through that. We have more detailed screenshots in um, the deck, which we might be skipping over, but I'm just going to show you a quick demo within Coupa. So you can go to setup, find your forms, and then let's say I'm creating a new form. This, this type of thing is typically called a supplier information form. So that's what the test is. It's a demo supplier information. This is a name and then go ahead and hit save. Whenever a form is being created within Coupa, or whenever a form is being updated within Coupa, we need to define what type of form that is. And essentially the action on the form will have certain properties which will come down the line on whether this is getting sent to the supplier or not, or whether the updates can be requested from the supplier or do it done internally. So it kind of breaks down into exactly how we showed you here. It can, it can be a new supplier request or it can be a supplier update. The new supplier request is the action on the form that we took for form number one, which is essentially the internal requester saying, I want a new supplier. So when we're creating that first form or form one, as I kept describing it, we, this is the action that we select. In a situation, if this form was supposed to go to a supplier, we would have to select the second option, which is supplier update, which can be external. What this means is this does not need to be populated within Coupa. A supplier needs to populate this information on his or her hand, which could be on the Coupa supplier portal. So this is where we want this. This is where the form needs to go, and that's the action. The third is the, I'm going to ignore the third one for now, but the fourth one is essentially a supplier update, which is the update form or the second type 
uh, that we created here on what updates need to be made to the supplier. So uh, an update form would need to be created. Any questions on this? Yeah, so the supplier update we currently do not have. Is that correct? That is correct. So if we were to use that, it would go directly to the supplier initially or the property. Um, who would get that initially? Supplier update, I've seen it done both ways. So one could be a person requesting a supplier update. Uh, that is something that can go through with this type of form or alternatively we can just send the update form to the supplier if I know exactly what the update is. So I can send him a remit two form, uh, remit two form, a primary contact update form or such information if we if we go to use that. We, we can configure it in either way depending so on the problems. I assume that's additional cost. Correct. To configure that? Well, I mean to to use it. Is it you know part is it part of something we already have paid for, we're just not using it? That is correct. It uh, is the sim process. So you can leverage it. I mean for myself, that seems like it would be a benefit because right now most of our changes are coming through an invoice and somebody saying, hey, update this be met to address um, or you know it, it could come by an email or something like that so the control is um, isn't quite to par what I would like to see this would go directly to um, the vendor themselves for them to do it and it's also auditable so we can see who's actually going in and approving the updates. And then I'm also assuming this would just download into Oracle. That, so two parts to that. So the first part that you mentioned that these things need to be auditable, it needs to be owned by the supplier. Yes, that is something that Coupa can do right away. We don't have this configured today. Uh, we don't have this designed for today, but it is something that is a part of your current Coupa module. There's no but, addition. But when you say today. it's not designed for today, what's not designed for today? We don't have a form. Just, we don't have that form today. Oh, you mean just uh, PNG doesn't have PNG it, does not have it. It's designed, but it's not implemented for us. Right. Right. Okay. It, we, there's no separate module that needs to be purchased from Coupa in order to implement that. The second piece um, that kind of becomes an issue is we have the swivel chair process. Typically, we would see this as an integrated, there's some value in integrating this directly into Coupa, into Oracle, but that does not exist today. So we have the swivel chair where someone's looking at the information collected on these SIM forms and go ahead and populate that into Oracle. So when you say swivel chair, it just means that it's manually reviewed Correct. and then populated into Oracle. Correct. As opposed to automation. Correct. So when an update needs to take place in. So whenever we have these update forms configured, it's kind of beneficial if that automation exists. Otherwise, it, go, it kind of goes back on the queue to someone who's reviewing this information and then manually keying it in. Not saying that it can be done, but it 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 it's I've seen it more beneficial when that integration is already designed or built for as a part of that. So that's typically when an update form takes place. Yeah, I think that might be an opportunity. Okay. okay. I'm gonna take a note of that. So when we look at Coupa, the first step that Coupa will ask you to do is select the action of which part does this form belong to? Is this new? Is this an update? Is this internal? Is this external? And then Coupa on the back end can do whatever Coupa needs to do, but an action needs to be selected up front. Um, Coupa also asks you to select something called content groups. 
this could be either give it to everyone or give it to specific members within a content group. What it means is, where should this form be available to everyone or should this form be available to only a given set of users? So I can say, I want this form to be only available for US users, or I want this form only to be available for Canadian users. And I can go ahead and add those content groups. How we met and chose to design it uh, from some of our earlier discussions was we want one single form available to everyone, and we have the ability to toggle between US and Canada. And then once we toggle into that, uh, all the conditionality will open up for US, then US only questions would come up for Canada, Canada only questions would come up. And I'm going to get into that in uh, the next few slides. But any questions here? I'm also okay. Okay. The second piece is a type of form. And I'm going to talk all back and forth between Coupa again for a minute. Coupa has two types of forms. The first is called the primary form, the second is called the subform. I'm going to talk about subform first before we get into that. If you have multiple pieces of data that we're looking to collect from the supplier, or there, is, there are some types of information that are overly sensitive, such as REMI2 information, person's contact information. What Coupa did was it created subforms, and this has something to do with how Coupa's backend is created, but when you, when you see this, you see, you'll see SIM address, SIM contact. That's a typical subform. So let's run it to subform demo. It's essentially, you go ahead and click save. The attributes of this form are a little different. This has more information that is very specific to what we would be looking to capture. So this could have an IBAN number, a banking information, banking route number. Those are kind of the standard out of the box fields that we can use to create them. What tends to happen is a subform is generated first. So we try to get the correct information that is important to us. Currently, there are three subforms in Coupa today. First is primary contact, second is remit two, third is diversity. We kind of create those forms first on the specific information that we want to collect that are hypersensitive. And then what we do is we have, an, we have a way to embed that on the primary form, which will have basically all of the information that we're looking to ask a supplier. Does that make sense or any questions here? So let's let's go ahead and say I got an IBAN number and I made this a required field. The one thing that is important to remember here is that anything that we create, uh, it first needs to be published as a subform. So let's say I IBAN number is the only information that I'm asking. Uh, this has certain controllers on their end, so it can be either a new or an update. And then I can go ahead and a new one and then I can go ahead and hit publish. I'm going to go ahead and find demo. So once it is in a published status, what tends to happen is it'll that information will start to be available on the main demo form that I was creating. So if I look for IBAN number, Look for the subform Revit 2 demo, then the subform can get embedded on the primary form that I'm looking to, and that information can be collected as a part of this. Any questions here? These things, one caveat is that these things tend to change as Coupa evolves and has additional releases. Right now, they only have this for primary contact and Revit 2. They are adding diversity now as a part of it, and then going down the line, they might add more subforms. 
but this is essentially how a subform would work. We have four subforms available in Cupid today. One is the primary address. Uh, these are the information pieces that are located that are collected on it. There is a render remit to address and a sim foreign remit to address. Uh, those are configured as two different forms again with different requirements. And then we have the primary contact and the supplier diversity subform system form that is currently in Coupa. So these are these are just the ones that are available in Coupa and configured today by Angeline in our Coupa instance. Any questions here? Uh, just a quick question um, on the remits. You had that supplier update. So if a supplier had a separate remit to, is that something the supplier update would also take care of? Would that be sent to the supplier and then they would send a additional remit address? So how I have seen it in the past is, when we want an update from a supplier, we <clears throat> embed two subforms on that supplier record on the on the main form. Well, those two are one has an action which says net new. The second one doesn't has an action saying uh, update. When that is used is let's say my office is getting relocated. My remit to address was on the Toronto office. Now it's going to be in the Calgary office. The form having those two forms, one with a new and one with an update. The update form can take a D activation of the remit to. So the supplier can say, this is my drop down. This is my Toronto address. This is no longer going to be applicable. So please deactivate this. And then on the new form goes ahead and adds that uh, the Calgary office and says, all right, this is my new office. This is the new remit to information. Um, this is essentially what you need in Kuba today. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, so that's just really identifying one remit to um, possibly the main remit to, I would assume. Right. So it doesn't deal with uh, remit one, remit two, et cetera. I don't have a published example on this right now, but I believe if you have a sub form on a main form, like how we just embedded this, when this gets published, you would get that plus sign, like you can add multiple. Right. Okay. okay. We we can dig deeper on that if after I talk to Gary and see what's going on. Okay, thank you. Of course. Sim fields, and this becomes a critical piece of it. There are three types of sim fields in Coupa today, and so coming back to the Coupa example that we saw. Certain pieces of information, such as the IBAN number, uh, would be added, or if you go through the drop down, there are more that Coupa's added. I think there are about 150 or 200 of these right now, and with future releases, they tend to add more. But these are kind of standard. This is what we call as under fields for supplier information. This is what we call as standard out of the box fields. What this means is this is a Coupa generated standard value that they tend to see with all of their suppliers or all of their customers. And you'll see the reporting name is kind of just the name. It's not an editable reporting name. So it kind of tells us like this is a standard out of the box field. And they have several of these today. So as you can see, they have a federal tax ID, tax region, classification, payment terms. Uh, this is all good information to collect. Somewhere on the back end, Coupa does have this connected to their supplier record, so it has a direct impact when a standard out of the box field is used. The idea is that more often than not, you should always try to use the out of the box field wherever possible because. Um, Coupa maintains these, Coupa makes updates to these as required, uh, or as they go through additional releases as part of it. 
So this is what we mean by Coupa standard out of the box, which is Coupa's preferred method. Examples, as you can see, the name, display name, industry, and dunce number. Why these are critical? And one thing that we did touch upon, several of the Coupa out of the box fields have this I or um, this information, making it something called a smart field. When I say smart, it does some level of validation on the form. Uh, again, it's not going to check the form completely, but it'll make sure exactly like in the previous example, if I enter, if it's supposed to be in between five and 34 characters without spaces, and if it's going to be letters and numbers only, if I input this as four characters or I input this as 35 characters, Coupa would immediately block it and say, the information you provided is incorrect. You need to recheck it. So it, it does have certain smart capabilities on the back end. That's one. The other piece is if information is very sensitive, it does tend to do some level of encryption. So for example, if a tax ID needs to be captured or a banking account number needs to be captured, Regular end users in Coupa should not be able to see this information. So using these smart fields, it could be either must be exactly nine digits, so populates what those digits are, or what it does, not or, and what it does is in certain fields, it'll kind of do the star, 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 star sign, and then put four digits at the back saying this is what it, this is what the last four digits of this ID is so that it's a little more protected when forms are going through approvals or forms are going through updates. Any questions on this? Just a quick question on the federal tax ID. Mm -hmm. Maybe I just missed it. So the vendor is filling out their own federal tax ID or is this something we fill out and then it's encrypted after? The vendor populates this in form number two, essentially. Because how would we know if what they entered is correct? Whether that tax ID was correct? Right. Uh, I think that's a separate check, but this would essentially be whatever the vendor would provide us. Like Coupa doesn't do verifications. Right, so are we in our able... Coupa sim, I'm sorry, in our Coupa sim, I believe we can untick the box and be and we can see the whole number. Right. You can always untick okay. it. Uh, I think that's a permission that you can. Yeah, Perfect. I think we can currently do that. Just wanted to let one. Just wanted to add that. Yeah. Thank you, Marilyn. We can. Appreciate it. Thanks. Those are the kind of checks that Coupa, and that's why we typically say we should use Coupa out of the box fields wherever applicable. Custom fields, and I'm going to come to this in a minute on what those are. Uh, but before we go into that, I just wanted to talk through quickly on what the general fields are. Let's say there is an attachment or a business justification or a text box saying, please describe your business in detail. That's what we call is a general descriptive field. It's not something that you typically capture. It's good from an information perspective. It's not something necessarily we would capture from an Oracle standpoint. So if it's just business justification on why we need it, I think it's just sufficient to cover it on the forms. Or that's how we typically see it. Again, it's customized by the client, however he or she sees fit. So we have all of these general fields in here, which could be descriptive text or attachment, checkbox, drop downs, lookups, multi selects text area, text field. So let's say if I build in text area. Sorry, it's a text field, not a text area. So we typically see customers who go in there and select text area. Again, this one just has a larger character limit compared to a text field. And we could please provide.
So that is the kind of ability that we have to just update this. We could, of course, make this a required field or a not required field, depending on how we see fit or the criticality of the question. The other piece is that we could assign it. We could assign a hidden text saying. And this could be anything. Please provide a list of items sold in the US only. So this is like a supportive text or typically we see like, can you please provide your revenue of the last year? And then we say in USD only in the bottom. So the supplier has some more information what he or she is looking to provide you. We could assign a default value. Again, I think a better example of this would be on a text field. And say revenue in the last 12 months in text was the only make this a required field. If we have to put a default value saying put it as zero, so that is a value that will always exist when a supplier sees the form and then he or she can feel free to change it. Uh, more often than not, clients don't tend to put this because we actually want a supplier to put actual information in there because sometimes they'll see like it's a pre-populated value. We don't really want to give that information, so they kind of skip it. The one field that you see at the bottom here uh, is conditionality. So that is essentially how we built out the previous form. If we do something, some of these fields, so for example, a drop down, this has capabilities to create that. Oh, one quick trick before I get into that. If you can do, there is a drag feature on Cooper Forms, so we can drag and place the questions wherever we feel like placing them. So I'm going to take this as the first question. You could ask the question, what region does this belong to? And we, we could give them two options. It could be US, US or Canada. Or we could add a new option, Mexico, if that's where we're expanding further. And we can close this. These are the three options that tend to show up for a supplier when he is the first question that he or she is looking to answer. When that is, let's say we want a specific piece of information for Canadian suppliers. So we, what we do is we go ahead and add a text field. Please provide your tax ID. This is something Canada only that we can add. We can make this a required field. We can build conditionality of the questions because this does not pr pertain to US or US or Mexican vendors. We can say is if the region is Canada, then build this up. So this question would have conditionality built into it, wherein only if the user selects Canada as a choice in the first question, he or she would be, this question would show up when he or she is populating it. If not, if he, he or she selects a US or, can, US or Mexico, this one would not show up because it's a Canada specific piece. We showed this in your standard form today. Um, on how this is configured. So if you go into test. And then PNG region is Canada, then province and international tax ID uh, automatically pop, pull, uh, pull up in that scenario. If it's US only, then tax ID number uh, kind of pops up for that. So that's that's how that's how that was built. Essentially, on the back end, we, we place conditionality on it. Any questions here? Okay. So those are the various types of fields that are currently getting impacted as a part of this process which is that we went through the standard out of the box and we went through the general fields that are generated within Kuba. Uh, 
I just pulled this from the Coupa page on what kind of smart field validations they do today. So for US, they do routing number. For Canada, they do an account number, routing number, and then certain denominations as well. So this is just here for informational purposes. Talked about how to access and edit those forms. Uh, last piece here, once we feel like we have all the information ready to go, we have two choices. Either we can save it as a draft, in which case it will not be available to any of the users, or we can go ahead and publish, and then it'll show up in our form section when we when we look to find the forms as part of it. That's the last piece to creating those forms. Any questions here? I want to take you through was when we're on the forms page and let's just for simplicity assume like these are the only two forms that are available in Koopa today. We have several icons on the right. So if it is. If we need to delete the form, well, we can go ahead and do that. If we want to deactivate the form. Uh, this is essentially if we are creating a new form or we're making an update to the form. If we are looking to edit the form or we're looking to copy the form. One call out here is that. These delete buttons are showing up now because we haven't sent these forms to supplier or they're not active right now. If they're active in the future, then the only option we have is to deactivate the form. Uh, if it's published and then create a new form with whatever updates that we are looking to do as a part of it. Uh, it wouldn't allow you to really edit a form either. The other option is we can always copy a form if we would like to add more fields to it. So this was the previous one that we created with an IBAN number uh, and a submit CS pyramid to ID. Let's say I want to add more information to it so then I can create a new uh, form, but using the copy feature, it just simplifies my work saying you don't need to recreate the whole form again. It just needs to be copied over and then the previous forms details would publish over. Any questions on this? So I have a question. In our current um, vendor registration forms, when we send them out, we've had um, like, you know, three updates. Mm -hmm. um, to make sure that we always send out the correct one, I think it's, I don't remember, I think it's exact, I think it's 3.1. Um, I can actually inactivate those other forms so they don't go out. Yeah, there's a pardon me. That is correct. You can be so I've got like a, it says select supplier information form that we want to send out and we always we want to send right now just the version 2.3. So I've got two other ones um, previous to that and I can inactivate those, correct? Right. You're talking about it from here, right? Like you, you want to request information. Let's click on yeah, let's click on that. I, I just went to suppliers and um, like out as if I was going to resend the form out. Yeah, drop down. Mm -hmm. And then you've got like three forms in there. So if yeah. I wanted to deactivate, uh, you're in tests right now though, right? Correct. So I've got a, a 2.1 and a 2.2 that I'd like to deactivate. I could just go in there and deactivate those, right? Correct. Okay, cool. Thank you. And that's where it's managed from. Pardon me? Yep, you're you're exactly right, Mary Lou. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, just for some additional context to the rest of the team, in case of in case we need to resend a form to a supplier or get more information, that is typically done through here, uh, wherein we go to the supplier page in Coupa, select the supplier this applies to, and then request information, and then we can customize the message that he or she would like to receive, and then we can select which form are we really sending to them. It's, if it's a supplier update form or what are we really requesting them for uh, in order to make those required updates. 
sometimes the question comes from a supplier like I never received it. Um, it went into spam or it got deleted or my network did not approve it, so we have to resend it in those kind of scenarios. Any questions? Any other questions? Okay. Custom fields. This is one of the biggest pain points that we've been reviewing uh, with Carla, trying to, to delete a lot of these, uh, especially since processes kind of change. But what essentially are custom fields? So let's say there is certain information that needs to be captured in Coupa. What we tend to do is Coupa allows for every object, be it supplier, be it requisition, be it their addresses, they allow us to create up to 20 custom fields, uh, saying these are the additional information pieces that you need. Please be mindful, even on request, Coupa does not expand beyond 20 custom fields for any customer of theirs. Under this, one of the object, and this is what we typically call an object in Coupa language, is supplier information, which is essentially SIM. And there are certain pieces of information that we like to add, capture as a part of the as a part of the SIM piece of it. When is this required? And as you can see. The current ones include doing business as property serves, uh, which is very specific to PNG, expected annual spend, information that we're looking to capture from the supplier. When is this custom field used in Coupa? Is first, there is a business requirement to drive it that we want this information. So in our case, in PNG's case, we want to know that if this supplier is serving us, which property does this supplier belong to, or does this is this a larger supplier so it goes globally into all our properties? So that's the first requirement on when we build a custom field. The second is, um, do we need to create a report from the custom field? What this means is. And again, we have a whole section around reporting at the back, so we'll 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 make our way to that. Uh, but essentially, when a supplier provides a certain piece of information, do we need a report that can generate and tell us is this required as a, any part of reporting? So let's take an example like commodities. If it's an IT related commodity, we have CDW, we have Best Buy. Uh, we have Apple as three different suppliers. Let's say we want to do a drop down click and report on who are all of our IT suppliers. A custom field can help you do that because the custom field will generate which commodity does it belong to, and then it gets applied to one of those. So that's what we mean by a field needs to be reportable on a form. The second is the it needs to draw an approval workflow. So we saw how vendor management got added into the approval workflow, and that is based on the form that was selected. Going forward, let's say if commodity managers are brought in and they, they need to be approving every supplier form. So having that field, uh, the custom field in Coupa, would allow us to say, all right, this is the commodity is IT. I need the IT approver or the IT commodity manager to be a part of the approval workflow. So it can be used as a driver to help Coupa understand when does that person need to be added into Coupa. In this case, the cost and field being a commodity. The third piece is First, before we get into the last one, are there any questions on the first three? Okay. The last piece is if a Coupa supplier record needs to capture that information. What do we mean by that? Let's say 
there are certain pieces of information that are required for Oracle. This could include your banking information. This could include the primary contact. This could include a series of information pieces that feed into Oracle and live and breathe in Oracle. However, we want Coupa's supply record to also have that information. So the example here would be, let's say, property served. This is something very specific to PNG. That's our business requirement. Let's say on the Coupa supply record, we wanted to say which properties does it associate with so that when a user is selecting a supplier or a user is going through the supplier, he or she is able to see that. What? Why a custom field is critical in that scenario is because we can translate that between custom fields. What that means is you see this default from icon. We can default the custom field information from a different object. So again, not to confuse everyone here, but um, let's say there is a particular field that is captured on SIM. That same field is translated over and put on a supplier record within Coupa, and then that translates over to a supplier record in a requisition. Uh, then it this translates over one after the other. Um, so it starts from the sim form and then you can translate that information from one versus the other. Any questions there? One example of that is on the sim form we are capturing the DBA or the doing business as name. If I go to a supplier record, Within Coupa. So let's say if I go into this supply record, do a quick search on where DBA exists, you will see that information translate over into Coupa. I edit the supplier for a second. The alternative name DBA. This comes over from the SIM record, and this is also stored on the supplier record within Coupa. Any questions here? Again, we've created some screenshots here so that you can go over how uh, a supplier how these objects interact with each other and how these updates are made. So that is essentially the kind of updates that would be required from a AP perspective today when a form needs to be changed or when a form needs to be designed or a form needs to be updated for whatever new functionality or new requirements are populated. Any questions here? Approval chains is something that Carla and Angeline are doing and will continue to own it going forward. Um, I'm not going to dive too deep into that since that's not changing the current state process, but for our knowledge for our purposes, what it does is there are several supplier forms that SIM forms that are in Coupa. Uh, the approval driver is called the supplier form. What they can do is when they edit one or create a new one, they can add a name, they can add a priority level to it, they can define all the conditions, and then they can tell Coupa on whom who should be approving that if the required conditions are met successfully. Uh, going forward, if it's an LA region supplier, all forms would automatically be routed to Rob Creer. Uh, as a part of it. Any questions, thoughts, concerns? OK. The bigger piece um, that would still need to be done as a part of SIM is something called SIM sequential mapping. And why this is critical is it tends to up, this tends to impact all of the SIM users 
um, whenever a form is updated or whenever a new form is created. I'm going to get into it in a minute on how this takes place. So I'm going to open the sim sequential mapping form. Again, you go through setup and then you go through creating a you go to some sequential mapping and form. One call out here. This is how Koopa does things as of R31 in Koopa, but um, this is going to be this is going to be reconfigured as a part of a different object. Or how this is going to be done is going to change in some of the other in the future releases. But for this purpose, right now, I'm just going to share what sim sequential mapping can do. When we talked about, and we went through a few of these, give me a second. So, when we talked about the overall process flow within Coopersim, we said form number one is submitted by a new requester. Once it's approved, it automatically triggers form number two. And it automatically triggers a sequence of events. What we're trying to tell Koopa in this scenario is, all right, you have form number one. You collected all of that information. Once approved, what's the next step that Koopa is supposed to do? Which is telling Koopa that, this is form number two. This is where we want you to send it. And that is essentially what we call as sequential mapping in Koopa. It is, a, it is very simple. It is just a three part process. It's mapping name that can be assigned to it. Again, you'll see like these pop yellow pop ups when a functionality is going to be disabled and embedded into a different functionality. We can we can define which form does it pertain to. So which is the new ender request, and then what does it trigger if it's if the new ender request is going to be receiving it. So what we're saying is when we do this is when the internal supplier when the internal user has requested what he or she needs it to do. Once it's approved, kick off the second form, which is going to the supplier. And while you're doing that, we also want you to send the supplier a note, uh, which would have basically this information or this update. That essentially is a very simple use of sim sequential mapping. This messaging can be updated to what we need it to be uh, for the supplier. But and we can edit it on the fly while we create this sequential mapping. But that's essentially the part of the process that we wanted to show you that how one form relates to the other. Any questions on this? The one thing is, let's say the new vendor request form is one form and the vendor registration questionnaire is version two. We would have to disable this sequential mapping before creating a new sequential mapping. Uh, so that. So this will this will essentially impact like let's say your form, your current forms need to be updated. This would this would be a second piece that would need to be updated with it to tell Koopa like, all right, this is the new form or this is the new version of the form. Exactly as Mary Lou pointed out, this is version 2.2, this is version 2.3. So we need to refocus it saying, you're not going to look at 2.2 anymore. You're going to look at 2.3 and this is where the update takes place. Any questions here? Okay. And we have thrown in a bunch of screenshots in here um, so that you guys can have access to it um, while we're there or while we're away as well. Well, essentially, the other thing is Koopa essentially has. So let's say we've gone through the process. 
and we've gone through the whole approval process. A SIM. This piece of the process is called a SIM record created within Coupa. So once the first form is complete, that information is stored in a place specific for SIM, specific for that given supplier. When a supplier is currently in the SIM process, what tends to happen is the supplier gets a new status. So the status is onboarding. And this would remain the status until after the supplier is integrated back into Coupa. So a supplier record tends to get built out, but a user cannot use this supplier just yet because the supplier is not fully onboarded yet. So let's say I use 37097 Balloon Works as a part of it. When I'm reviewing a supplier record, I also want to see what the SIM information has passed on. So we see several icons on the left here. We can go ahead and click some supplier information. And then this would show us basically every information piece that was collected through one or the other forms uh, that we wanted just for our viewing capabilities within a supplier record. Any questions here? Again, we have shared uh, screenshots here so that you can have better access to that. Sim reporting. And that's the last piece that I wanted to do and then open the floor in case any other questions come up. There are several forms that are being populated, some by the internal user, some by the supplier. All of this is stored in a place called the supplier information form responses. And again, this is this is detailed in the this is outlined in the details that we have shared. So when we select this, these are all the suppliers that are currently in request. It'll give you information around what the forms are, what is the status, whether it's pending approval, whether it's still uh, whether it's fully applied, or whether it's still in draft status. That is, someone started the started it and then did not complete the required fields. Uh, this is what we call a SIM form response. We can click into any of, sorry, we can click into any of these and see what information was populated, who was the supplier, what stage it is it at, and if it's pending approval, then what kind of approval is it pending? So we can drive reports out of these in a standard way that Coupa typically does. It's we could see all that were rejected. So these are some standard views that Coupa has created, saying show me what are the external forms only. What that means is show me the forms that are currently with the supplier and at what status are they at. So let's say ABC Corp was getting approved. We get to see all of the information that ABC Corp has populated as a part of this. Alternatively, we can build a view that we would like to see. So let's say demo view. Uh, it has certain fields that you can populate on and then go ahead and hit save. Uh, we can adjust the columns. We can adjust what conditions we would like it to follow. So I'm just going to keep it standard. And then we can export this to as any other Kuka object, we have the ability to export this into Excel. Uh, this would generate a report. You have the ability to schedule a report um, so that that information is captured or that information is sent to whoever this needs to be sent to. So if Mary Lou is in, in putting all the data, then we can set up a view of hers or create a report of hers that can be shared with her every Friday, for example, and then she can just review what forms that she needs to populate on the day off. 
Any questions on reporting? We have some additional Cooper resources that we have outlined here. Um, again, these link to what we call is the Coupa success portal. Um, in case you have questions or in case you have any reference material that you need to go back and review, um, these should help you select that in addition to the documentation that we have built out uh, within SIM. But that essentially is the SIM process. Any questions? So uh, currently, uh, the vendor maintenance team uh, authorized members can go into test and just kind of play around with this and you know try to create workflow, et cetera, or new forms. Yes. Okay. We just have to review what permissions they have in the test instance today, but uh, we can give them authorization to go ahead and play around with it and reach out in case any questions come up. OK, great, thank you. Any other questions? If not, we'll give you some time back. We're going to share this document right after this call. And in case any questions come up, please feel free to reach out to us. If not, we can schedule a quick 30 minutes and consolidate all of the questions and share that with you. If you if you have any while you're playing around in the system. Uh, and making any updates. Aman, this has been very, very educational. Thank you so much for putting this together. Of course, uh, Krista put a lot of hard work preparing this. I'm just delivering. Thank you. Really appreciate it, Krista. This is really amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank of course, you. we'll help any way that we can. All right. Thank you, everyone, and we'll give you 10 minutes back and then we'll reconnect on follow up. Okay, thank you for everything.